In this video, we solve another example problem for applications of first order ordinary differential equations. In this case, and the problem involves Newton's law of cooling. Now you don't actually have to know it's called Newton's law of cooling. Everything that you need to know about solving this problem is in the problem statement here. Um, so let's read the problem statement and write down everything that's given. So it says a cup of hot coffee initially at uh, 95 degrees Celsius cools to 80 degrees Celsius in five minutes while in a room of temperature 21 degrees Celsius. So let's write this all down. We've got a, an initial temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. Five minutes later, it's 80 degrees Celsius. And the surrounding temperature, room temperature, is 21 degrees Celsius. The problem, problem statement says, excuse me, assume that the rate of change of temperature of the coffee is proportional to the difference between the coffee's temperature and room temperature. So we're going to take this sentence here and we're going to translate it into a differential equation. Then we're asked to find the coffee's temperature as a function of time. Okay. So we're going to translate that into a differential equation. We're also going to need an initial, an initial condition, excuse me. Um, so let's read that sentence carefully. It says, assume that the rate of change of temperature, now if I use capital T to represent temperature, let's say this is the temperature of the coffee in degrees Celsius at time t, then the rate of change of temperature is the derivative of temperature with respect to something, and we'll just assume that it's the rate of temperature with respect, or rate of change of temperature with respect to time. It says the rate of change of the temperature of the coffee is proportional to, is means equals. Proportional to means it's equal to a constant times the difference between the coffee's temperature and the room temperature. So it's the difference between T, which is gonna be changing, and room temperature, which they told us was 21 degrees Celsius. So that's our differential equation. And then it says, asks us to find the coffee's temperature as a function of time. But in order to do that, we need an initial temperature. Um, and they actually tell us the, the initial temperature is 95 degrees. So we will say that T equals zero corresponds to the time when the temperature is 95 degrees. So the temperature at, at T equals zero is 95. And we'll use lowercase t for time. And since this says five minutes later, we're gonna have that in minutes that represent, or we're gonna think of T as time measured in minutes. Okay, now we've used the room temperature to set up our differential equation. We've also used this initial temperature to get our initial condition. If you're wondering where this 80 degrees Celsius and five minutes later comes into play, we actually use that later to find the value of that constant of proportionality K. So don't worry about that, we're gonna come back to it later. Um, but for right now, we've got a differential equation subject to an initial condition, that's an initial value problem. And then we can solve it using any method that we want, any method that's appropriate from those we've studied. So once you've set up that differential equation, you want to choose the appropriate method of solution. So we studied separable differential equations, first order linear differential equations, homogeneous polar differential equations, Bernoulli differential equations, and exact differential equations. So you ask yourself, which one of these is it? Hopefully it's separable. And there's no T here on this side, so it is, it is separable. So we're gonna solve this by separating the variables and we'll use the initial condition 
um, to find the value of the arbitrary constant in our solution. And then you're gonna have another arbitrary constant K and we can use this condition to find K. So we identified our solution method here. We're, we said it's separable. We're gonna solve it by separating the variables. So the first thing we do is we separate the variables. That's what you do when you solve a separate, separable differential equation. It's very easy. Now k is a constant of proportionality. We want all the little t's on this side and all the big t's on this side. So we're gonna divide by uh, t minus 21 here. Then we anti-differentiate both sides with respect to the appropriate variable. On this side, a u substitution is appropriate. Let's let u equal t minus 21. Then du is just one times dt. Well, with that in mind, this becomes a one over u. And this dt in the numerator is just a du and I'll factor it off to the right hand side or the right side. The right hand side of the differential equation is the antiderivative of k with respect to t, which is kt plus a constant. Now here we can continue. We ask ourselves, do we have a rule for that? And we do, it's the natural log rule. The antiderivative of one over u is natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, and we don't need the plus c because our c on this side is absorbed by the c on this side. And then we say, but u is t minus 21. So let's substitute that in. Now, if we want to get t by itself, and we generally do when we're solving an application problem, so the problem statement says, find the coffee, coffee's temperature as a function of time. So it doesn't say find an implicit solution to a differential equation. So we need T of T. We need capital T by itself. And we've got to do a little bit of algebra. So we anti-differentiate and then we're here and now we're solving for uh, capital T. Oops, sorry about that. So to get rid of this log, we'll exponentiate on both sides. E to this power is just that expression. Um, the log and the exponential undo each other. And so I can bring this t minus 21 down. Let's just put the plus or minus on this side. And then you've got e to some power plus a different power. Now using our rules from algebra, if you had e to some power times e to a different power, you would add the exponents. That's just the same as this. It's just that the variable is in a different place, but the property is exactly the same. So if I have e to this power and I've got a sum here, I can split it up into e to this power times e to that power. e to the c is just a different constant c. I'll call that c1. e to the kt I'll put right here. And plus or minus c1 is just a different constant c2. And let's add 21 to both sides. Okay, and so this is T of T. This is the temperature as a function of time. Now, there are a couple of pieces missing. We need to know the value of this arbitrary constant if we're gonna tell somebody what temperature the coffee is at a certain time. We also need to know the value of K. We have two conditions. We know that the temperature is 95 degrees Celsius at T equals zero minutes. And we know that the temperature is 80 degrees Celsius five minutes later, and that corresponds to T equals five. So if I've got this piece of information and that piece of information, we can put those, or we can put those both to use to find the C sub two and the K. All right, so after we've solved for T, now we're going to 
uh, use those two conditions to find uh, C sub two and K. I think I'm actually going to make another column on my piece of paper here. No, we don't have much space. At least we're not wasting paper, that's good. So I have T of T equals C2 times E to the K T plus 21. And this says, this first condition implies that T of zero is 95. And that second one that says after five minutes, the temperature is 80 degrees Celsius can be written that way. So we're gonna use these to find those constants. And remember what these mean. This says when little t equals zero, capital T equals 95. This means that when little t equals five, capital T equals 80. All right. So let's, and to use this first one, let's evaluate this expression at t equals zero. I don't know why I wrote a C one here, that should be a 21. Yes, I'm just tired, I think. So we plug that in, e to the zero is one. So we've got C, one, or C sub two plus 21, and we're going to set that equal to 95. Well, that means that C sub two is 95 minus 21, which is 74. So, our temperature function is this function, but now we can replace C sub two with 74. So this is 74 times e to the kt plus 21. But still it's got an arbitrary constant and it's got this k, that constant of proportionality from that Newton's law of cooling, which is described by this differential equation. In order to find k, we use the fact that t of five equals 80. So we, Evaluate that expression at t equals five. And then you set that result equal to 80. And so this is what we get 75 times e to the 5k plus 21 equals 80. Oops, 81, just 80. Subtract 21 from both sides. You get 74 times e to the 5k equals 59. And in order to solve this exponential equation, well, you, this I already started to do it and I, I forgot to mention what I was doing. We're getting the exponential by itself. So we add that, or we subtract this from both sides. Now you wanna get rid of the 74, so We'll divide by 74. And then to get rid of the E, you want to take the natural log of both sides. Because natural log of E to some power is just the power. Those functions undo each other by design. So these guys are gone. And that gives me 5K equals this logarithm. And that means k is one fifth of that logarithm. Now we're not finished until we have stated the coffee's temperature as a function of time. That was our temperature function and k turned out to be this logarithm. So let me write that down using more scratch paper again. So you have t of t equals 74 times e to the kt, where k is one fifth natural log of 54 over seven, or 59 over 74. All of that is multiplied by t. We add 21. That's the temperature of the coffee. Now, if you want, you can approximate that value of k. So you've got natural log of 59 over 74. Um, times one fifth or divided by five, same thing. So this is approximately equal to 74 e to the negative 0 0.0453 t plus 21. And this is great. Now we can say 
uh, what the temperature is at any time. We know after five minutes, the temperature was 80 degrees, but we might want to know, well, what is the temperature after two minutes? Or what's the temperature after 10 minutes? Or what's the temperature after a half an hour? And then, or what's the temperature after a really long time? And if somebody asked you for the temperature after a really long time, you would say, well, what's the limit of this as t goes to infinity? As t goes to infinity, this exponential, because it's an exponential with a, a large negative power when t is a positive, a large positive number, this would go to zero and the temperature of the coffee would approach 21, which is exactly what we would expect because that's room temperature. So that's how we solve that problem. See you in the next video.